Hey, welcome back. Now we're going to learn how to create an animation in After Effects. The first thing we need to animate is the silhouette scaling from big to small. To make this happen, we gotta animate the scale property. So, let's select the layer and press S to see it. But don't do anything yet. Just listen to what I'm explaining. Don't worry, we'll do it together in a second. Let's say I want the layer to stay the same size at the beginning of the animation, which is at zero seconds. Then, at second number four, I want the layer to scale to a larger size. Okay, let's see what we've got. As you can see, nothing happened. We didn't create any animation. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo my actions. Nothing happened because I didn't indicate to After Effects from what size to what size the layer should grow. In order to signal to After Effects the change I want to happen to this layer, I need to create keyframes. Keyframes are markers used in After Effects to specify changes that we want to happen to a layer at a particular time. By creating keyframes, we can instruct After Effects to transition the layer from one state to another at different points in time. Essentially, keyframes allow us to create animation in After Effects. So let's see how to create keyframes. So first, I will bring the time indicator to the beginning of the timeline, that is, to the second number zero. And now you can do it together with me. Let's decide that at this point in time, at the second number zero, this layer should be very big. So let's change the scale value until we get the size we need. And let's move the layer here, because we want it to enter the scene from the character's head. Now, let's scale the layer a bit more. And once again, let's move it down a bit. To see what we are doing, we can turn on this layer for now. We need to enlarge and position this layer until the figure's head appears to cover the entire triangle. If it doesn't cover the whole triangle, then we'll see parts of it. And that's not what we want. Therefore, let's keep scaling the layer and moving it until we get the result we want. Let's just write 130 here. I think it's big enough. Then, move the layer here, so it covers the triangle shape. Let's turn it off, and check that we don't see the triangle. Yes, it looks good. And now, we need to signal to After Effects that the layer should appear and remain as it is at this moment. For that, we need to create the first keyframe at this point in time. To create the first keyframe, we can click on the stopwatch of the scale property. And now, let's move to the second number two. Why exactly is second number two? For no particular reason, just because I decided that the length of this animation would be two seconds. We can change it later whenever we want. Okay, let's get a little closer to our timeline from here. Now let's move here to see the second number two. Place here the time indicator, and now let's change the values of the layer until it is centered. So, as you can see, as soon as we change the scale values, a new keyframe was automatically created for us. Which is great. But the thing is that the layer is scaling down, but not in the right direction we need it to be. The reason for that is because it's scaling down based on the anchor point's position. Let me turn on the layer for now, so we can see what we're doing. In this situation, we need to animate the position of this layer along with the scale animation. This means we need to create keyframes for the position property as well. So let's go back to the beginning of the animation, that is the second number zero. And now, select the layer, and press Shift P to open the position property along with the scale. And since we are good with the position of the layer at this point in time, we can create the first keyframe at this point in time to keep it that way. Now, let's move the time indicator to the second number two while holding down the shift key. This way, the time indicator will snap to the keyframes of the scale parameter. And now, let's move the layer here, drag it up, and move it a bit to the side. Now, let's scale down the layer even further. Let's enter 15 for the scale. Then, let's adjust the position once again. And now, while it's getting smaller, the layer also moves to the right place. To see how it looks, bring the time indicator to the beginning of the timeline and press the spacebar key. 
Great. You have created your first animation. Let's set the preview screen to fit and continue with the animation. Let's move to the second number four and set this layer to return to the position and size it had at the beginning. For this, we can simply select these two keyframes, copy them using the shortcut Ctrl C and press Ctrl V to paste them. They will adhere to the position of the time indicator. All right, let's see what we've got. We can turn off this layer so that the alpha effect can do its thing. Then, let's check out the animation we made again. And if you're hitting the spacebar but nothing's happening, head on over to preview. To change the settings here, we need to click on the layers panel, so After Effects can know which composition you are referring to. And if you don't see the preview panel, you can find it in window. Alright, so let's select the layers panel and change some preview settings. First. Open the shortcut list and select spacebar. Also, make sure to select the rest of the settings as I did. Alright, let's move on. Now I want to create a scale animation for the triangle as well. I want that at this point in time, at 2 seconds, the triangle will be the size it currently is. So let's stand at 2 seconds with the time indicator. Then, select the layer and press S to see the scale property of this layer. Now let's create keyframes with the current value. Once done, let's go to the second number 0 and change the value to 0. Next, let's go to the second number 4 and set the triangle to be of size 0 here as well. So now we have a slightly more interesting animation. When the silhouette gets small and the triangle gets big, Let's see how it looks all together. As you can see the movement of these layers is a bit boring. Everything moves at the same speed. It's because our keyframes are currently linear keyframes. To make these keyframes a little more interesting, we need to convert them from linear keyframes to Easy Ease keyframes. Easy Ease is a type of keyframe interpolation that helps you achieve smooth and natural looking motion. When you apply Easy Ease to a keyframe, it adds gradual acceleration and deceleration to the animation, making it appear more natural. To convert the keyframes, we need to select all the keyframes, right-click on one of them, go to Keyframe Assistant, and choose Easy Ease. Or use the very popular shortcut, the F9 key. Mac users, you need to hold the FN key and press F9. This time, let's just click on it, and as you can see, our keyframes have changed shape. Let's see how it looks now. It's already looking better, and we can make it move even better by adjusting the easing. I'll explain what I mean. In After Effects, keyframes are points in time where you set a specific value for a property in your animation. Linear keyframes create a constant and consistent change from one keyframe to the next. This means the animation moves at a constant speed without any acceleration or deceleration. On the other hand, these keyframes create acceleration and deceleration in the animation, making it more natural and visually appealing. And to control the speed of the animation, we can use the Speed Graph Editor. Speed Graph Editor is a tool that allows you to visualize and control the speed of your animation. It displays the speed of an animation property over time. By adjusting the handles in the graph editor, you control the acceleration or deceleration of the animation. An ease in creates a slow start, while an ease out creates a slow end. An ease in out combines both, creating a smooth acceleration and deceleration. And now I want you to pay attention to influence percentages down here. Imagine each handle as a pair of hands influencing the motion. Adjusting the handles closer to the keyframe increases their influence, creating a faster change. If you move them away, you decrease their influence, resulting in a slower change. But to change the influence of the animation using the graph editor and moving the handles can take too much time. Therefore, I want to show you a faster way to change the influence of animation. We can do it using the keyframe velocity panel. 
The keyframe velocity panel in After Effects provides a numerical representation of the velocity and influence of your keyframes. The panel shows separate values for incoming, ease in, and outgoing, ease out, velocities. The influence percentages we put here are the ones we saw earlier in the speed graph. If we want to create a nice ease in and ease out animation like we did earlier using the handles in the graph editor, we can change the influence of the ease in and ease out animation to 85. In the speed graph editor, it will look like that. This means the animation will start slowly, then at second number one will increase its speed, and after that will slow down. The most important thing to remember is that we didn't change the duration of the animation. The animation lasts for two seconds, just like in the beginning. We just changed the timing between the keyframes by adjusting their influence. It's a process of trial and error, so don't hesitate to play around with different settings to see how they affect your animation. So, since we already converted our keyframes from linear to easy ease keyframes, we can now change the influence of these keyframes to get much more interesting movement. And to do that first, we need to select the keyframes that we want to change. It's important to remember that we can't change all the keyframes for different types of properties at once. We need to change the keyframes for each property type separately. As you can see, in these two layers, we have keyframes for the scale property. Since it's the same type of property, we can select these keyframes in both layers and change them together. So let's select all the keyframes that belong to the scale parameter. Now, hold down the Alt key and click twice on one of the keyframes. And now we can see the keyframe velocity panel for the scale property. Let's change the velocity of these keyframes to 85% at the beginning of the keyframe and 85% at the end. Then click OK. Now let's do the same thing for the position property. We can select the keyframes from here or select the property from the layer. This way, we will select all the keyframes that we have for this property. Now, hold down the Alt key and click twice on one of the keyframes. Now we can see the keyframe velocity panel for the position property. Let's change the velocity of these keyframes to 85% as well. Click OK and let's see how it looks. Now, the motion of the layers is much more interesting. So, once we're done animating the first part, we can group these two layers together. Just like we do in Photoshop or Illustrator, but in After Effects, we call it Precompose. Precomposing is a technique used to group layers together and treat them as a single layer. One of the main advantages of precomposing layers is that it allows you to keep your timeline organized and easy to manage. It's pretty easy to do. Just select the two layers, and either right-click and choose Precompose, or hit Ctrl-Shift-C on your keyboard. Let's give that a try. Let's press Ctrl-Shift-C together. And now, let's call this composition icon animation. Make sure both of these are selected, and then hit OK. Now we can see the composition we created in the Composition panel and also in the Project panel. To enter this precomp, double-click on it, and there are two layers that we animated a minute ago. Alright, let's go back to our main composition and turn off this precomp for now, so we can focus on creating the second part of this logo animation. We are going to create similar animation but with the letter A instead of the silhouette. To do that, let's go to the logo design composition. Select the letter A, hold down the shift key, and also select the triangle. Now, press Ctrl-C to copy these layers. After that, navigate back to the main composition and press Ctrl-V to paste them. It is possible that the letter A may not be visible after pasting the layers. This could be due to the layer being stuck underneath the triangle layer. All you need to do is move the A layer above the triangle layer and it will become visible. Now, let's select these two layers and center them in the composition. However, this time, we won't use the Align tool. We will use a cool shortcut, Control home Now, let's make these layers bigger. So press S to see the scale property for the layers, and change the value to 200, just like we did with the triangle earlier. And now, let's click here to see the Collapse function and apply it to these two layers so that they are in their best quality. 
we can turn off the background to see what we're doing a bit better. And now, let's close the layers and start to animate the letter A. To start, move the letter down here. You can do it with the arrow keys on your keyboard. Then, click here to see the track mat function. And drag the pick whip of the triangle onto the letter layer to use it as an alpha. After that, click here to invert the alpha mat so that the triangle will use the letter layer as a cutout shape. Awesome! Now let's animate this scene. We will start by creating a scale animation for the letter A. So select it and press S to see the scale property. We know that the letter should be the size it is now later in the animation. Therefore, we can get to the second number too and create the first keyframe with the current value that is now. And now, let's get to the beginning of the timeline and scale the letter layer up to 500. We can drag the value manually or just enter 500 here. Let's see how it looks. And now, let's animate this triangle layer, like we animated the first one earlier, using the scale property. So select the layer and press S. But this time, to create a slightly more interesting animation, we can choose the anchor point tool and move the anchor point of the triangle down here. Let's hold the control key while moving the anchor point. That way, it will snap to this point. Once done, let's go back to the selection tool. And now, when we animate the triangle, it will grow and shrink in relation to its anchor point. Okay, press Ctrl Z, and let's stand at the second number too. Because we know that at this point in time, the triangle should be the size it is right now. That's why we will create a keyframe here with the current value. Now, let's get to the beginning of the timeline, and set the scale to zero. Let's see how it looks. And now, we can improve our animation even more by converting the keyframes to easy ease. So, let's select the keyframes and press F9. And now, let's also change the velocity of these keyframes, like we did before. And because all the keyframes belong to the same property, we can do it for all of them at once. So, let's hold the Alt key and double click on one of the keyframes. Set it to 85 and click OK. Let's see it one more time. That looks great. And now, after finishing the animation of these layers, let's put them into pre-comp. We will use the shortcut Control shift c This time, we will call it a animation. Make sure both of these are checked and click OK. Now, let's combine the two pre-comps we created. Turn on the first animated part, and let's find a good time to start the second one. We can turn off this pre-comp for now. To focus on finding a perfect timing. Okay, this seems like a good time point. Let's check it out. Now turn on this pre-comp and move it to the time indicator position. Now move the time indicator back and forward to see that the two parts blend well together. Let's continue doing that until we find a good timing. Alright, I think we should start the letter animation from the second number two. Let's see what it looks like together. Yes, it looks great. Let's see it one more time. Awesome. Let's press Ctrl S to save the project before we move on to the next part and start to animate the third scene, which is the animation of the rest of the letters of the logo. It's going to be awesome, so see you in the next part.